Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally launch day for the new F1 24 game, but is it actually a good new game with lots of cool features, or is it pretty much just a copy and paste of last year? Well, to be honest, it's not looking too great for now, but I'm going to quickly break down exactly what's changed in this new game, which should help you make up your mind if you are thinking of buying the game. So the main feature that everyone has been talking about is the new dynamic handling system, which is meant to be super realistic and authentic, but in reality... It's terrible. Drives like a pig. I mean, to be fair, it would actually be super realistic if it was trying to replicate the 2014 Ferrari handling with the mixture of understeer and oversteer, but somehow I actually don't think that's what they were trying to do. I don't want to go into too much detail because to be honest, I am absolutely no expert on how an F1 car should handle, but as a controller player myself, I'm finding the handling very strange in F124, despite many efforts to play around with different setups and different steering settings. Obviously, for a more in-depth review of the handling, check out someone that properly knows what they're talking about, like one of the eSports drivers or someone like that. But I feel like I can pretty safely say that the handling is just worse than it was in F123. And doesn't that look absolutely epic, wow. that Ferrari? Oh, no, that's going round. Oh, that's not epic at all. Yeah, the car couldn't handle my big balls. As far as career mode is concerned, there have actually been some fairly decent updates to the driver career mode. I think the new system of contracts and driver ratings is a good addition to career mode that should improve its realism. And I'm especially glad that you can now have contracts that are longer than a year because I always thought that was quite silly that you were just tied down to one year contract. It is also quite cool how you can do a career mode as a real life driver. But I mean, you could kind of do it before anyway, if you sort of just match your driver details to the details of a real driver. There is also a new challenge career mode where you do some career mode races and then you get put on an online leaderboard where you also get given some rewards, which includes, and get ready for this, some stickers for your compendium. Oh, yeah. And that's one of the greatest things I've ever seen in Grand Prix racing. But then that's pretty much it as far as new features are concerned. There weren't any changes to the My Team career mode, so it's basically exactly the same as last year. The menus look exactly the same, which I'm not a fan of, as they still feel a bit disorganised in my opinion. There were some updates to a few tracks to make them look more like they do in real life, but I feel like that's sort of the bare minimum to be honest. And ultimately, there's still one less track compared to F123 since Paul Ricard got removed. And the worst part of all of this is that you can't even customise your place anymore. That's fucking bullshit. But luckily, it's all good because you can still go shopping for different outfits, which really makes it all worth it. So yeah, honestly, there seems to be quite a significant lack of new features in F124. So overall, I would say that it's probably not worth the money, to be honest. I mean, maybe if you're like super into driver career mode, then you could think about it. But even then, it's still just so much money to spend on a game that isn't even much better than F123. If you were thinking of buying the game, you're probably better off waiting for it to go on sale, which it should do after a couple of months and then the price go down even more around Christmas time but yeah there we go that is it for this video let me know in the comments what you think about F124 and whether you've bought it or not but other than that thank you for watching and I'll see you next time